G'day everyone. As you know, fish finders are a tool used by fishermen in boats to find out what's going on beneath the surface of the water. But for us blokes stuck on shore, we just have to guess or, you know, we can have a swim and figure it out. We can cast our lure out and figure out how deep it is by when we tap the bottom. But there's a better way. I'm here to show you the Deeper Chirp Plus castable fish finder that I can use from the banks. Okay, so with fish finder clipped on, I've got my phone on my rod with this handy phone mount, which is also made by Deeper. Now, that'll allow me to view the readout via Wi-Fi from the unit clipped onto the end of the line there. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is get the unit into the water with a little cast there, and then open up the Deeper app on the phone here. There you go, connecting and Deeper Chirp plus down the bottom there. You can see it's already starting to give me a few readings there. It is very shallow though. Now what I'm going to do is activate a screen recording thing for this phone so you don't have to deal with the glare and everything and that way I can give you a heads up display of what this looks like on the video. Alright, so screen should be recording. I'm going to start with a little cast over there. Catch quite a few yellow belly just casting a worm over to there. And you can see on the readout here, the unit's just over there in the water, and we're looking at one metre of water. You can see in the top right corner, 14.6 degree water temperature. That's not too bad, considering it's still winter. Now, it's showing a readout of fish here at the top. I'm not sure if that's accurate or not. There may be a big carp sitting right there. It's quite possible. But it's likely some bubbles suspended through the water. Right, I'll go with a slightly larger cast now, over to that side, out in front of that snag. Now I haven't been for a swim over there, so this will be new information to me. I'm looking at 1.4 metres of water, and the water's a tiny bit cooler at 14 degrees over there. Now, as I bring this in slowly, it will update the readout as the unit comes across the top. So you've got 1.2 metres. It is quite shallow here. I could literally just walk across here, I think. But this will tell me. You can see the readouts jumping up and down at the bottom there a bit. That's from when I'm bringing in the unit. It's bobbling up and down. But if I let it sit for a sec in the water there, you can see that it does level out. There's no structure from the top of the water to the bottom in that spot. It's giving a readout of a little fish up near the top there and some bubbles through the water which isn't too unexpected considering there's a waterfall right there. So now I'm going to cast over near the reeds way over there and see what that looks like. Straight in the middle. See we're getting a bit of depth now 1.7, 1.6 meters. Still quite shallow. And I knew this spot was quite shallow because I have been swimming here. I haven't been over that side as much as I've been over that side. But this is really good information. You can see there's no snags or anything in the water right there. Straight over into that corner. What have we got over there? 1.9 metres. So that's looking quite a bit deeper than it is out in the middle here. Nice deep hole over in that corner, which makes sense because I've caught cod from that corner before on worms. I'll bring this very slowly back through the water and it will update the reading on the phone as I do so. One point six meters there. One point four. So at the moment that corner is looking like it's the deepest bit of water. Because I've walked across here and it's not that deep, I know that. No real structure to speak of. Alright, let's have a cast over that direction. Right over there like that. And yep, 
80 centimeters of water, not much at all. Okay, as I'm coming through the current, which runs through there to a small channel that way, you can see there's a lot of bubbles in the water. It's showing a readout of fish over there, but I do know that there's a big log that runs under there, and that's probably what it's picking up. Yeah, there, see that red line? That's showing the log under the water, which it's just come across now. So that's what structure looks like in the water. Now I want to try and go straight. Perfect. Now I think there's a deep hole there. Well, not as deep as I thought, 1.4 meters. So that's really good information for me to know. I thought there was about two meters of water there, to be honest. We're only looking at 1.4. Now it's likely this column here is probably a school of bait fish. Little minnows, maybe gudgeon or rainbow fish sitting there. Whereas these ones spaced out are probably bubbles in the water. These could be fish. Alright, so that gives me a look from here. I'm going to go over to that point and up to there and cast around and see what over there looks like. Alright, so what's right in front of me here? straight down. I'll let the unit settle. There's 1.1 meters of water right here. Not too bad at all near the reeds. I'll bring that up and I'll get back over to that corner where we found the deep spot earlier. Right up against the reeds there. 1.3 meters of water where the unit's sitting over there near the reeds. So if I bring that back towards myself and past the reeds there, 1.5 meters, that's probably the hole I found before. 1.4, 1. wow, that drops. Okay, so there's a big log sticking up in the water there. You can see that red coming up. I've just come across it. So there's a nice bit of structure there as well in that hole, which is lovely. Very good information to know. Let's go straight across here. And bring it back this way and see what's in the middle there because I don't think I've read that yet. 1.4 meters of water right there. Now I'll walk in the current, it only comes up to my knees, so there's very sharp drop off between the bubble line and where the unit's sitting. Again, you can see fish notifications at the top there. That's more likely caused by the amount of oxygen and bubbles flowing through the water there because of the waterfall. 1.7 meters, that's not too bad there, quite deep. Compared to the rest of the hole, I know, you know, it's not quite deep, but for this hole, that's, that's not too bad. 1.8, 1.9, a few little undulations there where it drops off and comes back up. Still 1.7 meters right there, 1.6, here it comes, 5, 1.4, so there's a nice hole here, from there to over there, see it's about 1.5 to 1.9 meters, 1.7 and there's a log sticking up out of the water there, I'll just let it sit and read that, bit of structure floating above the bottom of the airspace, and you can see a fish notification there next to that log. That may or may not be a fish, it may be misreading part of the log, or there could be a native down there sitting next to the log, as they so much like to do. I've learned quite a lot throwing this around in one of my favourite fishing spots, and that can only mean one thing. Better fishing. The more information I know about a fishing spot, the more likely I am to be able to catch a fish. Well there you go guys, there's a very brief introduction to the Deeper Chirp Plus. It's already changing the way I fish. It'll change the way you fish too. If you're interested in checking them out, I'll leave a link in the description so you can go directly to their store. And if you use the code ROWAN15 at the checkout, you'll save 15%. That's over 50 bucks. That's a pretty good deal. I will make more videos about the Deeper from time to time, showing the different features and how to use those and how they're beneficial to you when trying to catch a fish. I hope you enjoyed watching guys. I'll catch you in the next video.